When I first started studying botany, I quickly realized that everything I thought I knew about fruits and vegetables was a lie. Fruits, not a fruit. Not a berry, not a berry. Yes, a berry. Also this, hair, not a nut. Still not a nut. Literally nothing is a nut. Except for these. Whew. Okay, let's all take a deep breath. It's gonna be okay. team i know that was a lot don't worry we're gonna break it down one earth-shattering botanical truth at a time so here's the deal with fruits and vegetables culinarily speaking we think of fruits as sweet and vegetables as savory botanically however it is a completely different story and that's because fruits have a very strict botanical definition whereas vegetables well the word vegetable doesn't actually mean anything in botany i'm sorry vegetables we still love you Vegetables can come from any part of the plant. Eggplants and zucchini and tomatoes are all fruits. Carrots and radishes are roots. Potatoes are underground stems. Lettuce and onions are leaves. And broccoli, you know, we're gonna have to do a whole other episode about broccoli, because that's crazy. Fruits, on the other hand, refer to one specific part of the plant in botany. their mature plant ovaries. I love a good plant ovary. Now to really understand the true meaning of fruit, we're gonna have to do a deep dive into plant reproduction, specifically flowering plant reproduction, because only flowering plants make fruits. So you won't find a fruit on a moss, a fern, or a pine tree. Flowers contain the plant's reproductive organs. Stamens are the male organs. Their anthers make pollen, which contains sperm cells. The carpels are the female organs. They consist of a stigma, style, and ovary. In the ovary, you'll find ovules that each contain an egg. The sepals and petals serve to attract pollinators that move pollen from the anthers of one flower to the stigma of another flower. Sperm from the pollen travel down the style and into the ovary, where they fertilize the eggs in the ovules. Each ovule will mature into a seed. The fertilized egg develops into an embryo, aka the baby plant, inside the seed. It remains dormant until the seed can move away from the parent plant and find an ideal spot to germinate and grow. And how does it move away? The fruit. The ovules are becoming seeds inside the ovary, which itself is maturing into a fruit. So the purpose of fruits is to disperse seeds. Plants want to spread their offspring as far and wide as possible to ensure their success. Fruits come in every shape and size imaginable to take advantage of every dispersal method imaginable. Some fruits are juicy and delicious, so they'll get eaten by animals who will poop out the seeds later. Some fruits have spikes to help them hitch a ride on a passing critter. Some are aerodynamic and can soar through the air, and others can float on the seas. Botanists could fill a dictionary with terminology just for describing these different types of fruits, but we'll go through the important ones that will help make sense of everything I told you at the beginning of the episode. Are you ready? Okay, fruit tissue is called pericarp and consists of three layers, exocarp, the outer layer, mesocarp, the middle layer, and endocarp, the inner layer. Fruit types are defined based on the characteristics of these pericarp layers, as well as the number of ovaries a flower has. A berry is a fruit with a completely fleshy pericarp that came from a flower that has a single ovary. A tomato is a great example, and if I cut it open, we can see that all of the layers are soft and fleshy. The skin is the exocarp, we have the mesocarp here, and a pulpy endocarp. Avocados are berries, the leathery exocarp still counts as soft. And blueberries are actually berries, so not everything is a lie. <laughs> you can also see that there are no rules about seed numbers, so a single ovary can contain multiple seeds or just one. Citrus fruits are a special type of berry called a hesperidium. The entire rind of the orange is actually all three layers of the pericarp. So what are we eating when we eat an orange? Well, it turns out that citrus fruits are lined with tons of special hairs that are filled with juice. So when you eat an orange, you're biting into a giant ball of plant ovary hair. Mm. Probably closer than you ever wanted to look at oranges, especially now that you know their deep secrets. Peaches, plums, and nectarines may look like berries, but they're actually a different type of fruit called a droop. And if we cut it open, you'll see why. Only the exocarp and mesocarp of droops are fleshy. The endocarp is hard and stony. Anybody there? This is the pit. So I used to think this was just the seed, but it's actually the innermost layer of the fruit and the seed is inside of that. Once you crack it open, then you'll find the seed inside. 
Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. Uh, oops. You can see that the endocarp has a little chamber inside, and that's where the seed was. Nuts are fruits with completely dry pericarps that are indehiscent. That means that they don't open up to release their seeds. So peanuts don't count because while they're completely dry fruits too, they're dehiscent, meaning that they open up to reveal the seeds that we eat. Walnuts and almonds are seeds that come from droops. True nuts are things like acorns and chestnuts. Okay, but what happens when a flower has more than one ovary? You can see that blackberry flower has tons of carpels. Each one has an ovary that will make a fruit. And as they grow and ripen, they all kind of get stuck together and you wind up with a blackberry. This is called an aggregate fruit. Each individual fruit on the blackberry is actually a little droop. So blackberries are aggregates of drooplets which is the cutest word in botany ever. You can also have the opposite situation, where single ovaries from multiple flowers all combine into one fruit. This is fittingly called a multiple fruit. Anyone wanna guess what a cool example is? Pineapples. So this used to be a stem with lots and lots and lots of flowers on it. All the different segments are single ovaries from all these different flowers that have all fused together into this beautiful pineapple. Isn't that so cool? Strawberries are a whole other story. The delicious part of the strawberry isn't a fruit at all. It's the base of the flower called the receptacle that swells and grows and becomes red and sweet. The actual fruits of the strawberry are all the things you probably think are seeds on the surface of the receptacle. Crazy, what? And now a confession. I too have lied to you about fruit. Remember this? I love a good plant ovary. Well, similarly to strawberries, the delicious part of the apple is receptacle tissue. Only the core of the apple is fruit, so I wasn't actually biting into the ovary here. The crunch was just too good to pass up, but I am very sorry to have misled you. Well, I hope this episode has given you some newfound respect for fruits and sympathy for vegetables. There are a bazillion types of fruits out there and we only got to cover a few today, so I'll put some links in the description for a more comprehensive list. Don't forget to subscribe and for more fruitful science IRL episodes, you can meet scientists who are finding a cure for citrus greening disease or learn how to extract DNA from strawberries. And I'm coming for you in the next episode.